Okay, so let us continue our discussion. What we have uh, discussed in the previous uh, lectures is that we can use Fourier series representation. Now, so if you have a function f of t, which is obviously periodic, so uh, as I told you earlier that we are not going to discuss in detail uh, the derivations and the requirements of Fourier series, but uh, we are going to use that for uh, structural dynamic analysis. So, what is important is that uh, the function f of t is a periodic function and in that case we can actually uh, write down the Fourier series expression. So, we have a n cos n um, lambda t say plus summation b n sin n lambda t. We can also uh, write in terms of omega if you want. So, in place of uh, lambda you will have omega n omega t here also omega t. Right. Now, recall if you have a system excited by a forcing function which is say p sin lambda t, then we have derived a solution for that. Okay. So, we will use any other periodic function today, we will solve some example and for that we will uh, uh, develop the Fourier series. So, if we have this type of problem, so we just use lambda because we denote a driving frequency as lambda and then we also define frequency ratio which is lambda by omega n if you recall that is what our notations are. So, in that case we have a 0 which is given by 1 by t then 0 to t actually we can start from any time point and then we have to go over a complete time period. So, it will be say if we start from t star. So, it will be uh, the upper limit will be capital T plus T star. Now, for that first coefficient, we have f of t dt. Now, if you look at this expression, what is this quantity? It is nothing but average of f of t. Right. Then, uh, we also solve a n and then b n right. So, for a n it is 2 by t, so 0 to capital T, then we have f of t multiplied by cos n lambda t dt. Similarly, for b n it is the same integral limit f of t sin n lambda t. So, this we have discussed and we also discussed why we do that. The reason is if we have a periodic function, then we can use this formulation and represent that function in terms of sin and cosine and for sin and cosine we know the solution. So, we can easily uh, write down the solution. Now, so let us take an example. So, example. We have say a forcing function f of t which is defined by sin function. So, our f of t 
in this case is equal to some amplitude. So, we have say p sin lambda t then mod of this. So, if you plot this function obviously, we will get what we can see on your screen. So, uh, it will start from 0 and this is the time period. Actually, if there is no mod, this function will go like this. So, this is t by 2, but because of this modulus, we have the forcing function f of t which is always positive. Now, for this function, because it is a periodic function as you can see, then obviously, we can represent it in terms of sin and cosine. So, what will be this function? Its expression will be a naught plus whatever we have uh, at the beginning. So, this is the expression. So, what is the a naught in this case? Because our task is to find out a naught, a n and b n. So, if we can do that, then we can represent this forcing function f of t in terms of those coefficients. So, what is a naught? It is 1 by t 0 to t, then the function itself. So, we have p sin lambda t mod of that dt. Then we can modify this because we have this modulus, so it is always positive. So, we will have 2 by capital T and we can change the limit to its half, so up to t by 2. So, we will have p sin lambda t dt. Right. Then we can complete this. So, 2 by capital T that is the time period, then we have the amplitude p here and then if we integrate this function sin lambda t, so we will have minus cos lambda t divided by lambda and evaluated over the domain 0 to t by 2. Okay. So, Obviously, this lambda will come out, the lambda in the denominator will come out and then we have cosine of lambda t evaluated at half the time period and 0. So, if you do that, you will get 2 p by it will be pi. So, we have evaluated, I just uh, leave this exercise, you just uh, apply these limits and you will get this expression just cross verify at your end. So, what we have here is uh, the first constant that is a naught and which is nothing but the average of the function f t. Just uh, uh, imagine if there is no mod as we have in this case and we have f of t as p sin lambda t. then. Uh, up to 0 to t by 2, capital T by 2, we will have the positive value of the function and then from t by 2 to t, we will have the negative value of the function and in that case, uh, uh, what should be the value of a 0? Because it is the average, we can easily sense that it should be 0. But in this case, because we have a positive function and you can see we have a finite value of mean. So, the first component is evaluated. Let me make some space and then we will continue our discussion. So, uh, we have this uh, value of a naught as 2 p by phi. Okay. Fine. So, this is 2 p by Fine. So, what is remaining? We have to also evaluate a n. So, a n in this case will be what? 2 by t and 0 to capital T 
then the f of t that is p mod of sin lambda t that is the function multiplied by cos let me just erase this part n lambda t dt okay so in this case again we can reduce the limit so it will be 4 by capital t 0 to t by 2 then we have p sin lambda t times cos n lambda t dt then obviously what we can do we can take 2 out of this 4 so, 2 p by t and then we can take 2 inside 0 to t by 2. So, we have 2 cos n lambda t times sin lambda t dt. So, if that is the case then we have 2 p by t and then 0 to t by 2 it will be sin n plus 1 lambda t minus sin n minus 1 lambda t integrated over 0 to t by 2. Then obviously, if you carry out this task what you will get is uh, um, 2p by t and then you will have 2 by 1 minus n square. So, again uh, from this step obviously, this is a sine function you can easily integrate and then put the limits. So, from there you will get this function. Now, uh, sorry there will be a, instead of t there will be a pi. So, I leave this, this is a very simple exercise, it is just you have to integrate this sine function and then apply the limit and you will basically get this uh, expression. So, what we have derived is the expression for a n. So, again I leave this small uh, step as an exercise for you all of you please try if you have any trouble so do let us know then we will uh, help you okay so what we have now the expression for a n so let me make some space again so we have a n as 4 p by pi into 1 by 1 minus n square okay so the last term is bn once we have bn then we can write down the fourier series so that we'll do in a minute okay so for bn we have again 2 by t integration 0 to t then again the forcing function it is p mod of sin lambda t times this time it will be sin n lambda t dt then again we can reduce the limit So, p times sin lambda t and then sin n lambda t. And if you perform this integral, you will see you will get 0. 
again I leave that as an exercise for you just try it it is very simple. So, you can easily prove because this is a sine function. Mm. So, sin lambda t times sin n lambda t. So, if you just uh, integrate it over this limit you will get 0. Now, uh, what is f of t then? Sorry, our function was small f of t. So, f of t is equal to a naught which is 2 p by pi then plus we have summation over n and we have a n cos of n lambda t the other part will be 0. So, in place of a n we can write down the expression. So, it will be 4 p divided by pi times 1 by minus n square cos n lambda t right. So, that is the expression. Now, I am not writing this limit. So, again I just wish you to see the limits of this summation. So, that I again leave it obviously, the upper limit will be infinite just see what should be there where from you start what will be the nature of a, this n that again I leave it to you. But the fact is we started with a function which is periodic but in this case it is it was not like a sinusoid for which we have derived the close from expression. So, this periodic function so this is nothing but our p mod of sin lambda t right. So, for this function we do not have the close form response, but what we can do we can replace this function with this quantity. Now, the moment we do that if you look at this expression it has a constant term and then another cosine term. For both of them we have derived the closed form response and because this is a linear system we can assume that the system is driven by this constant part first. We find out the response for that and then uh, next we consider this cosine part for every n uh, it has a amplitude which is here and then this for this cosine function we have the closed form response and then we again find it out for every n and then add them together to find out the total steady state response. So, that is how the logic is built for the linear system and then if we have a periodic function obviously, we can easily represent that function in terms of Fourier series in this case b n is 0, but there may be some other case where you will have b n. So, you can find out the response for this um, components. Okay, so, now let us move to a second example. So, in this example what we have is, so another example, so this is example 2 in this lecture. So, what we have again a single degree of freedom system I am not drawing that as the system. So, it is driven by a forcing function f of t and this case again it is periodic. So, we have a block function like this. and it continues. So, amplitude is again say p and this is the time period. So, half the time period is marked here and for this system SDOF system we have to uh, apply this force and find out what is the 
response. What to do? Again, this is a periodic force. So, if you have a periodic force, obviously, we can find out the Fourier representation of this force. And in this case, if you have a forcing function like this, you can have a Fourier representation of the signal which is 4 pi by pi summation n equal to all odd terms then 1 by n sin n lambda t. So, that is the Fourier series representation of the uh, function. So, again I uh, leave this as an exercise please uh, complete this exercise at your end following the same steps that we have done in the previous example. You will get uh, this uh, solution. Now, what we have? We have a single degree of freedom system. So, we have m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is driven by the forcing function f of t and in place of f of t, what we can do? We can write down that it is now represented by the expression 4 p by pi then summation n equal to 1 3 up to infinity then 1 by n sin n lambda now, the moment we write down the Fourier representation of the forcing function f of t, then you can easily sense we know the closed form solution for all uh, these sine functions as we keep on changing n. So, we will have different sine function and for each of them we can find out what is the response that we will do in a minute. But for the time being, let us draw the force amplitude spectrum how it will look like. So, and then uh, we will move forward. So, we have on this axis we have uh, lambda n which is equal to n lambda. So, it starts with say 1 then uh, because we have the Fourier series defined at 3 lambda then 6 lambda. So, this is lambda 3 lambda 6 lambda then for each of them what should be the expression 4 p by pi n and that is the expression. So, the first one will be like this. So, what is this amplitude? It is if I write let me make it little bigger. So, this will be what 4 p by lambda sorry it is pi. That is the amplitude. So, when you put n equal to 1, so we have 4 p by pi. Now, at 3 lambda n will be 3. So, it will go up to so this is 4 p by 3 pi and then here it will be four p by six pi and here we have f of t amplitude of that. So, this is the force amplitude spectrum. So, in the time domain the force is represented by this block like shape and its Fourier representation what we can see here 
for n equal to 1, 3, 6 and so on. It will continue actually as we go higher and higher. So, for all those um, odd frequencies, all those sorry this will be 3, this will be 5. So, this will be 5. So, all these frequencies will have uh, this amplitude. Now, for each of them we can figure out what is the response. So, what will be x of t? So, in we have sin lambda t, then obviously if it is p sin lambda t, we have p by k divided by square root of 1 minus r square whole square plus twice eta r whole square sin lambda t minus theta. So, that is when we have p sin lambda t. Now, we can extend the same logic. So, for our case, so this, this is the solution when we have p sin lambda t as a forcing function. So, in our case, if we start with n equal to 1, so we have 4 p by pi sin lambda t. So, obviously, we can change this expression. So, let us do that in a minute. So, we have 4 p by pi k then summation we have n equal to 1 3 up to infinity and then here we have sin n lambda t minus theta that is the phase difference divided by we have square root of 1 minus we have r I write r n square we will write that expression in a minute plus twice eta r n whole square. So, what is r n? r n is equal to n lambda divided by omega n. So, that is our r n. Now, if I just put some number, so if we have say mass is equal to 10 kg, k is equal to 1000 Newton per meter and if we consider damping to be 0, for the time being we can have uh, any other value of it. So, these two together will give omega n which is equal to k by m. So, it will turn out to be 10 radian per second. Now, for that we also have to define lambda. So, for the time being if we say lambda is equal to twenty radian per second. So what will be R n? It will be twice n, right? Now for that, what will be x of t? X of t will be four p by pi k then summation I am not writing the limits. So, sin n lambda t minus theta divided by square root of 1 minus r n square. So, this is twice n whole square. So, that is the expression for the response. 
obviously in this case we have uh, no damping so you can add damping in this problem but the main uh, point to be noted is that if you have a periodic function then we can take the help of Fourier series representation and for that uh, we again can find out the solution of the system. Now, uh, I again leave another task for you plot response amplitude spectrum. So, this is an exercise for you again the same way we have drawn force amplitude spectrum you can also plot the response amplitude spectrum and also repeat the same exercise for other values of uh, damping and see how does it behave. In fact, you can try one case when you have uh, this driving frequency instead of 20 radian per second, let us consider 10 radian per second and then you can try what is the response. Okay, so, that gives you some idea of uh, how to use Fourier uh, series to find out the solution. Now, uh, not always we have functions uh, which are periodic. For example, uh, if we have a building which is uh, exposed to say earthquake loading, uh, you do not get a shape, a smooth shape like this right as you have in case of sine functions. So, imagine you have a function. So, if I have say function we have like this. And we are not in a position to figure out what is the period. Then we have already actually discussed uh, how to approach this problem. So, what we have in this case uh, is that we can assume say it has a period. So, what we can assume that the function repeats itself after certain time. So, this is the time period capital T. Now, the moment we do that, we can for this function develop the Fourier representation. We will do that in a minute. So, we have, so on the negative, we have uh, negative T axis, we have the function goes like this, right. Now, if we have such a situation, uh, we have discussed that f of t, f of t is we have c n e to the power i n omega t, where omega is equal to 2 pi by t. Now, obviously this will be minus from minus infinity to plus infinity and we have discussed that if you recall um, if we um, push this delta f that was the representation if you see the derivation in the previous notes if we push this to 0 what will happen to t capital T so that t goes to infinity. Now, if that is the situation we actually derived under this condition. So, when we have uh, n plus 1 times f and the next immediately next frequency in the previous steps is that is n f. So, this is nothing but delta f right and this is equal to 2 pi by t. So, if this limit goes to 0 obviously this goes to infinity. 
Now, under that situation, what we get is uh, Fourier um, transform of the function f of t. So, e to the power minus i omega t dt and then it is from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, this is what we have already discussed. Now, Again, we also discussed that uh, you can have a constant 1 by square root of 2 pi or you can adjust that uh, according to your definition. You can introduce that constant in the forward transform or backward transform uh, for the time being. Uh, I am not going into the details of that, but the point to be noted if we have a non-periodic. So, we started with non-periodic function. Then we assume that function repeats itself after a certain time interval and then you push that limit uh, to infinity and then immediately what we get is the Fourier transform. So, if we have now just imagine example if we have a function So, this is t and f of t. So, it goes to from minus t to plus t. So, that is the limit. Then for this function, we can actually find out the Fourier. So, it will be minus infinity to plus infinity. So, we have this amplitude say p. So, we have p e to the power i omega t obviously there will be minus dt. Now again uh, this is a simple integral I, I uh, can leave that to you. So, if you do that so it will be 2 times p t into sin omega t divided by omega t. So, that is the expression and if you plot this function so f of omega for omega will be like this. So, this way it will continue. Obviously, it is symmetric I am not drawing the other half ok it will go the same way I am not drawing the other half. So, this will be 2 pi by t and so on as we progress on x axis which is omega. So, we will get the representation. So, we started with this forcing function which is again non periodic, but we assume uh, that it uh, has a period and that we extend up to infinite and then immediately we get a Fourier representation. Now, in this case again what we can do we, we know what is x of omega if we uh, drive a system with this forcing function obviously, this will be h of omega that is the frequency response function times f of omega. Now, we have f of omega we know for a system what is h of omega uh, you refer the previous class note you will get the expression for h of omega we get x of omega and from that again we can find out what will be x of t. So, this will be nothing but integral minus infinity to plus infinity x of omega e to the power i omega t d omega. So, we get the response of the system. 
and that is how the logic goes. So, if we have a non periodic function, then this is the approach we adopt. We use Fourier series, but the moment we push the limit, uh, the limit of that time period t will get the Fourier transform, which is here. So, we can define this uh, time domain signature of this forcing function and from that we can find out what is its uh, Fourier transform. The moment we know Fourier transform, if we have a system, uh, just multiply that uh, with uh, h of omega and immediately we will get the solution. And the solution here in this case you can see is so simple to find out because we have to multiply f of omega with h of omega. h of omega we know in closed form because the moment we define a system, we define actually mass stiffness and damping and the moment we define all these three parameters, we actually define the function h omega. So, that completes the solution when we have uh, both periodic and non-periodic function at the input. So, if you have any periodic function, we can go for Fourier series representation. Then the moment we have the constants in the Fourier series representation, the coefficients, then we can apply the closed form solution and find out the total response. Otherwise, if we have a non-periodic function, then we take the approach of Fourier transform and solution is even more simpler because we just need to multiply f of omega as in this case with the help of h of omega. So, once we have a non-periodic function, then we can easily find out the response. I again leave a home task for you. So, for this function, you can find out the response x of t using Duhamel integral, right. We have already developed a code for Duhamel integral and then using this expression. So, you can find out. So, now find out x of omega from this expression and then once you take the Fourier transform and you can find out x of t here. Compare these two. So, you use Duhamel integral and then find out x of t using Fourier transform and then compare. So, this is a task for you and see it yourself how using different approach you can find out the response. So, with that let us close here, uh, we will continue uh, in our next lecture uh, how to solve numerically the response of a system when we have a forcing function which is also defined numerically because in most of the problem for example, if you take the earthquake response of a structure, we measure the earthquake at a particular site where we have the time histories of earthquake and using that time history, we need to find out the response. Of course, one of the way is again Duhamel integral, uh, we have done that but there are other numerical approaches to solve the same problem. So, that we will do in the next week when we will take up the problems where numerical solution of the dynamic equilibrium equation will be discussed and we will develop some code, we will have some MATLAB session and there we will solve the problem and see how we can also numerically solve the response of the system. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.